One of the most important objectives in economics is to understand how markets react to changes in the economy. In this lecture, we will use the supply and demand model to analyze the determinants of market price and quantity. The intersection of supply and demand describes the equilibrium in a market for a good or service. At this price and quantity, there are no shortages or surpluses. In other words, for every consumer willing and able to buy a product, there is a seller willing and able to sell it. Many different factors affect the equilibrium price and quantity. Some factors affect the demand curve, while others affect the supply curve. Before we look at these demand and supply factors, it's important to make a distinction between a change in quantity demanded and a change in demand, and similarly between a change in quantity supplied and a change in supply. Let's start with the demand curve. A change in the quantity demanded refers to a movement along an existing demand curve caused by a change in the price of that good or service. Consider the demand for surfboards. As the price of surfboards decreases, more consumers are willing and able to buy one, which results in an increase in the quantity of surfboards demanded. But what happens if something other than the price of surfboard changes? In this case, there might be a change in demand, which causes the entire demand curve to shift. Let's discuss the general factors that cause the demand curve to shift. These factors include changes in tastes and preferences, income, prices of substitutes and complements, the number of buyers, and expectations. The first factor affecting demand is tastes and preferences. When a product becomes more popular, we would expect the quantity demanded at every price to increase. This increase in demand causes a rightward shift of the demand curve. But when preferences for a good falls, the demand curve shifts to the left. The second factor is income. Whenever we have more money to spend, whether that comes from working more hours or from other sources, spending on most goods increases, causing an increase in demand. When demand for a good increases with greater income or falls with lesser income, these are called normal goods. Income has a positive effect on the demand for most goods, but not all goods. Suppose that as a result of having more money to spend, you start frequenting restaurants more often instead of eating cheap instant noodles at home. In this case, as income rises, your demand for instant noodles falls. When demand for a good falls as income rises, or when demand rises when income falls, these are called inferior goods. The third factor is the price of substitutes. Here we are not talking about the price of the good measured by the demand curve, but instead the price of an alternative good. In the market for potato chips, if the price of pretzels rises, some consumers might select chips instead, increasing the demand for chips. The fourth factor is the price of complements. Complements are goods that are consumed together. For example, if the price of lift tickets at ski resorts rises, we'd expect a reduction in demand for ski rentals as fewer people choose a ski vacation. The fifth factor is the number of buyers. Naturally, as the population of potential buyers increases, the demand for goods and services will increase, all else equal. And the sixth factor is changes in expectations. If consumers believe that prices for cars will rise in the future, they will more likely buy a car now before the price rises. This reaction causes the demand for cars to increase. Remembering how each of these six factors affect demand might appear challenging, but one strategy is to think about how each factor affects the willingness of consumers to buy products. Are consumers more likely or less likely to buy a product? This will help you determine how demand changes in a market. Let's now turn to the supply curve. Much like demand, Various factors cause the supply of a good or service to change, including changes in technology, the price of resources, production substitutes, expectations, number of sellers, and taxes and subsidies. The first factor is technology. Improved technology reduces the cost of production, which encourages more producers to supply the good. Therefore, an increase in technology increases the quantity supplied at every price. 
This increase in supply shifts the supply curve to the right. The second factor is the price of resources used in production. For example, home construction depends heavily on the price of lumber. If the price of lumber increases, the supply of new homes decreases. The third factor is production substitutes. What else can be produced using a firm's resources? If a carrot farmer notices that the price of onions is rising, the farmer might reduce the supply of carrots in order to produce more onions. The fourth factor is changes in expectations. This is the one factor that affects both the demand and supply curves. Remember what happened when consumers expected the price of cars to rise in the future? That caused an increase in demand now. But consider the seller's point of view. An expectation of higher car prices might encourage sellers to hold some of its inventory until prices rise, causing a temporary decrease in supply. The fifth factor is the number of sellers. As more producers enter the market, the supply increases and vice versa. And the sixth factor is taxes and subsidies. Much like an increase in resource costs, taxes raise the cost of production, which decreases supply. On the other hand, subsidies encourage greater production, increasing supply. Now that we have described the factors that affect demand and supply, let's analyze how changes in demand or supply affect the market price and quantity. Suppose a factor causes a change in demand. An increase in demand causes the market to move to a higher equilibrium price and quantity, whereas a decrease in demand results in a lower equilibrium price and quantity. Remember that values for price and quantity are always measured from the origin. Do price and quantity always move in the same direction? No, price and quantity move in the same direction only with changes in demand. Suppose an improvement in technology results in an increase in supply. This causes the market to move to a higher equilibrium quantity, but a lower equilibrium price. This type of change is common for technology goods, such as computers and smartphones, which have decreased in price over time. On the other hand, a rise in the price of oil or farm crops used to produce other goods would decrease supply, causing equilibrium quantity to fall, but price to rise. In summary, the market is constantly changing due to conditions that affect how consumers and producers make decisions and the supply and demand model is a useful way to analyze and predict these changes in our economy.